If you've been using Audacity for a while, then there's a good chance that you might have heard of the big drama that went down in the free and open source software community a couple of years ago. That's because Audacity right here, which if you don't know, is a free and open source audio editor that is very useful. And a couple of years back in 2021, Audacity was acquired by this company called Muse Group. And it doesn't sound that scary, but the problem is that Muse Group almost immediately started making a lot of really questionable decisions with Audacity. Like for example, they wanted to introduce telemetry, which of course a lot of people in the free and open source software community don't appreciate. A lot of people, including me, don't really want to send some random company a whole bunch of data about your system. And even worse, the companies that they were sending these analytics to were Google and Yandex, two of the companies that you probably trust least with your personal data. And not only did they want to add telemetry, but they also started making some really weird decisions to their privacy policy. Like they added this clause right here to their privacy policy that basically says that they'll send data to law enforcement if it is requested, which is really weird. I don't want my audio editing software to send my data to law enforcement or authorities. And they added some other things like now people under the age of 13 can no longer use this software, but Audacity is actually used a lot in schools. So that's not good. And Muse Group just ended up making so many bad decisions about Audacity in such a short period of time that a lot of people just completely lost faith in Audacity as a project. Back then, a lot of people were talking about forking Audacity and making their own version of Audacity without all of these stupid changes. And even today, if you search up Audacity, you can still find people talking about how Audacity is spyware, Audacity is dead. But I recently started using Audacity again to clean up my audio whenever I'm recording these videos. And I wanted to know, is all of this still true? Is Audacity actually spyware? Or have things changed over the past couple of years? And that's what I'm going to explore in this video. So I'm going to let you know if Audacity is still safe to use, if you should be using Audacity, or if you should be using something else. And so let's just get into it. So first off, we have to talk about the telemetry, of course. That is probably the biggest issue that a lot of people do not appreciate. So let's check their current privacy policy and see what it's all about. So the two forms of telemetry that they have right now is update checking. So basically whenever you start up your Audacity, it is going to ping back to their servers and see if the software needs to be updated or not. And it also has error reporting. So if Audacity crashes for whatever reason, the developers probably want to know what's going on. So it will send a few things like your system information in order to better troubleshoot the problem. And they send a little bit of information, but not too much. So they anonymize your IP address and the update checker also pings back which operating system you're running, which country you live in, but that's about it. And unfortunately this is opt out if you're on Windows or Mac OS. So you do need to go into the settings and disable this. And for crash reporting, you can just choose to not send the data whenever it crashes. It'll pop up a little box asking you if you want to send it or not, and you can just not send it. And that's how you can mitigate the telemetry. But if you're on Linux, then actually the version that you get from your package manager probably isn't going to have any telemetry in it. So this Audacity, I just downloaded straight from my package manager. And I'm on Arch Linux, so I can actually view the build script and see what's going on whenever they build this. So this is the script that builds Audacity. And you can see here, whenever you build this, you can actually turn off all the networking features. So it completely disables all of this, no crash reports, no update check. So this is not going to send back any data. And I think this is true for every Linux distribution. I'm not 100% sure, but at least for Arch, you can rest easy that it's not sending back any data. And it makes sense because if you're using a package manager, then you probably don't need an automatic update check. You would just update it through your package manager. And after all the backlash, they decided to walk back using Google and Yandex for their analytics, and they just use their own self-hosted version of it now. So that's pretty good. I know they only did it because of their response to the backlash, but I guess that's good that they removed that. On Linux, you're not even going to have any telemetry, and if you're on Windows or Mac OS, then you have bigger things to worry about than Audacity's telemetry. So I really don't think there's any reason to worry about the telemetry anymore. But what about some other weird things like their privacy policy? Well, they have also reverted the changes where they said that people under the age of 13 can't use it anymore. They removed the feature that required that. And they also removed the part about 
giving your data to law enforcement, which was really stupid, but they did walk that back as well. So all of the community pushback that Audacity received did kind of work. And so a lot of the really bad changes that they had planned for Audacity just did not take effect. Like, for example, this telemetry, if you just scroll down here, they can see that they closed this. They deleted the telemetry branch and really cleaned things up. So that's good. And I guess the only reason why you still might be apprehensive about Audacity in its current state is because of the Contributor License Agreement, or the CLA. So what exactly is this? This is basically a legal agreement that everyone who wants to contribute code to Audacity needs to sign. I'm sure you know that Audacity is open source, so anybody can contribute code to it, but you do need to sign this legal document before you can contribute. And originally, Audacity was licensed under the GPL v2, or the GNU public license. And this is a popular free and open source software license, which basically says that anything that you want to do with the code from here, if you want to maybe fork it into a different project, then that also has to be free and open source. You can't take the code here and then repackage it as a proprietary application. But what Muse Group wanted to do is they wanted to update the license from GPL v2 to v3. And that by itself is not that controversial. There's a few small changes that some people might not like, but it was kind of necessary in order to ship out some new features. It was kind of necessary to change the license in this case. And so they sent out this form to everybody who has ever worked on Audacity, anybody who has contributed a little bit of code, they now had to sign this. But the problem is that they said that in the future, they might repackage the code as a proprietary application. So maybe they want to release Audacity on the iOS App Store or something like that for mobile or tablet. And in that case, they might change the license completely, but they will still be using all of the code that contributors wrote in their new proprietary projects. Now they haven't done that and they have gone on record as saying that Audacity will always be free and open source, but the way the CLA is written, they do have the power to do that if they want to. And so rightfully so, this still has a lot of people still suspicious about Audacity and the future of it. And I'll admit, this is not the best look, but for end users, if you're just somebody that wants to use Audacity, you don't really have to worry about this. This is more for people who want to contribute code to the project. This is something they'll have to worry about. But let's actually take a look at Audacity and see if anything has really changed. So it's been a couple of years since the acquisition, and so you might be expecting a lot of new features and new updates ever since the new management took over. And there have been a few updates to make Audacity even better. So whether they're game changing or not is up to you. But a few nice additions is the ability to drag these around with the mouse instead of using a tool up here, just to make it a little bit easier to use. And one popular feature that has been requested for years is the ability to do non-destructive editing. So traditionally, if you want to edit something in your audio, you would just highlight something, go to effect, and maybe you want to reduce the noise in the background, that's something I do a lot. Well, if you make some of these changes here and then later you wanna walk back those changes, there's not really any easy way to do that. Basically what you had to do before is just go undo, undo, undo a whole bunch of times. And obviously that's not the best workflow, especially if you have a giant project going on, but they now have non-destructive editing with this effects button right here. And so you can add effects here. Most of these effects you'll have to download from their website because there aren't that many out of the box. That's a little unfortunate, but the option is now there, which is very nice. They've also added support for VST3 plugins instead of just VST2 plugins. And I'm not going to go too much into detail because I don't want to sound stupid. I don't know too much about this, but it is a feature that has been long requested. And basically you're now able to use more modern formats of plugins and something that's probably going to be useful to a lot of people. And besides that, they've just made a few small interface changes. More changes are probably coming down the road, but there have definitely been some good features added since Muse Group took over. It's not all bad. And finally, I want to talk about some alternatives to Audacity, maybe some forks that you might have heard of. So when all of this drama went down, a whole bunch of new forks emerged, and it's people that basically took the existing codebase and launched their own version of it, separate from Muse Group, so they can take things in the direction that they want to. And unfortunately, I have some bad news. Most of these forks are completely dead now. That's just the way things go. There were so many forks before and there aren't many of them still around, but the one that is still around is Tenacity. And I guess the name is appropriate in this situation 
because this project is still getting actively updated. So the last commit was 15 hours ago, so it's still being worked on. Now, Tenacity has been around for a while. It's kind of had on and off development. Like, the original maintainer of Tenacity had to step down because he was receiving death threats from 4chan because he named the project Tenacity instead of Sneedacity. I wish I was making this up, but according to him, that is exactly what happened, and so he had to step down. And since then, it's kind of seen on and off development. And a couple of the other forks, like Audacium and Saustacity, I believe the previous maintainer of Saustacity is now in charge of Tenacity. I'm not sure, but a couple of these projects kind of combined. It's probably better to have one project than just a million other forks. So if you want to contribute to a fork, I guess this is the one that you use. And of course, Tenacity is basically an Audacity clone. You can see it right here. But you do have to be careful because they even admit this is a pre-release version. They call it a beta. And so if you actually want to use this, they don't really encourage you. This version might contain unknown bugs along with possible data loss. So I don't really recommend using this full time. You can probably try it out and things will probably go fine, but I'm not responsible if you lose hours of work using Tenacity. And I will say that Tenacity is kind of like the old version of Audacity, so it's missing a lot of the new features. Let me just skip through this and open up an audio file. But a lot of the new features that I was talking about, like the non-destructive editing, is just not here yet. Maybe in the future it will be implemented. There are some features that are still here, like you can drag this around. But don't expect this to have all the latest and greatest features from Audacity. So I don't really recommend using Tenacity, at least at this current point in time. So of course, I wish the team the best, but at least right now, I don't really recommend this, and I would still recommend you use Audacity. So in conclusion, I think that you should still keep using Audacity. A lot of the changes for the worst that were planned for Audacity have already been walked back, and I honestly believe that right now, Audacity is in pretty good hands, and as a user, you don't really have to worry about too much. So I hope you enjoyed my complete history of all of the drama. And I hope that clears some things up for you. And so the next time you want to edit some audio, you can go ahead and reach for Audacity like you always have.